Soccer, as the Americans call it, has had its fair share of ups and downs in the land of the free spending and the home of the brave rule changers. Highlights of them trying to make the game more appealing to American audiences include replacing the offside rule with a blue line, penalty shots that included running with the ball from the halfway line, and a game that featured six 15-minute long extra time periods. During the 1960s, the sport was seeing a bit of a revival in the country. The memories of the semi-final appearance at the 1930 World Cup and the shock win against England in 1950 possibly coming to the attention of many Americans. With surprisingly large viewing figures for the 1966 World Cup, a series of investors saw the untapped market that could bring success and wealth to those who could get in on the ground floor. After the World Cup, three executives with interests in various other sports franchises, Jack Kent Cooke, Lamar Hunt and Steve Stavro, created the North American Soccer League Consortium. The FIFA accreditation followed and plans were drawn up for the future of the league, but the spanner was quickly thrown into their works. A rival league immediately sprung up, created by Bill Cox and Robert Herman and named the National Professional Soccer League. Since they had the same initials, a new name was chosen for the first one, becoming the United Soccer Association, their initials thus becoming USA, which is the favorite acronym of many Americans. Much like with hedge funds and investment banks, staples of America's capitalism, these brave pioneers of the beautiful game had to think fast in order to make sure their idea would be the one that would rake in all the dough. Similarly to other business models of that climate, the main question was not related to the quality of the product, but to the speed at which the product could hit the market. The main issue facing the executives was now how to transplant decades of footballing culture onto the blank slate of a country where the sport was seen as an oddity. How could the passion of European fans, whose parents and grandparents often supported the same team, be introduced to American audiences in less than a year? With the invention of copy and paste still 10 years away, the United Soccer Association simply invited European teams over, gave them new identities and had them play a tournament in America. The European teams invited would travel to the US during the summer when they were technically on vacation, as back then the number of games played in a season was way smaller than today. And so with the teams hastily donning their new shirts and names, here is the list of teams for the 1967 season. Three English teams accepted the invitation, and thus Stoke City, Wolverhampton Wanderers and Sunderland became the Cleveland Slokers, Los Angeles Wolves and Vancouver Royal Canadians. Scotland also had three teams in the competition, with Dundee United, Hibernian and Aberdeen suddenly being known as Dallas Tornado, Toronto City and the Washington Whips. Furthermore, Ireland's Shamrock Rovers turned into the Boston Rovers, with their northern neighbors Glentoran shapeshifting into the Detroit Cougars, and no, I'm not talking about the kind that picks you up in a bar. Two teams from mainland Europe also made the journey to the US, Cagliari becoming the Chicago Mustangs and Ado Den Haag taking on the very long-worded name in the form of the San Francisco Golden Gate Gales. And I'm very proud of myself for saying that correctly on the first try. And finally, from South America, Bangu AC turned into the Houston Stars and CA Cerro into the New York Skyliners. The teams played in two divisions, Eastern and Western, with the winners meeting in the final. The Eastern Conference was won by Aberdeen playing as the Washington Whips, whilst the Western one was topped by the Los Angeles Wolves. Then, on the 14th of July 1967, almost 18,000 spectators gathered at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum and boy were they in for a treat. The score stood tied after normal time at 3-3 and after extra time the game ended 6-5 for Wolves, with David Burnside and Frank Monroe scoring a hat-trick for their teams. Despite the teams treating the tournament as a very serious occasion and the final being quite a spectacle, the league did not achieve the desired audience numbers, averaging at around 7,800 spectators per game. It seemed that not even the great Gordon Banks playing for the Cleveland Stokers had much in the way of pulling power across the pond. The folly of inviting European teams to stand in for the local ones was scrapped for the subsequent two seasons as the two rival leagues merged. The joint venture would become known as the North American Soccer League, which survived until the mid-80s. From there onwards, the teams were forced to field their own rosters and create their own identities. In 1969, however, the season was split, with the first part of the season becoming the International Cup. Yet again, invitations were sent out to European teams and Aston Villa, West Ham, Dundee United, Wolves and Kilmarnock accepted. The five teams for the season read as such. The Atlanta Chiefs, the Baltimore Bays, the Dallas Tornado, Kansas City Spurs and St. Louis Chiefs. 
the order reflects the transition of the European teams to their American names. Despite the name change, Wolves, now known as the Kansas City Spurs, claimed victory again in a round-robin tournament. And just like that, in the span of three years, Wolverhampton Wanderers added two American titles to their three first division titles back in England and four FA Cups. The following decades saw the true madness of the various attempts to create an artificial league system in the US, with players like Eusebio, Franz Beckenbauer, Pele and George Best being signed on exorbitant contracts. Similar to the Chinese Super League, such an economic model was not sustainable, and in terms of sports integrity, it was an absolute insult to the beautiful game. Luckily, in recent years, soccer in the US has become much more sustainable and intelligent, with the teams taking inspiration from the European game in terms of scouting and youth development. Thank you so much for those of you who have stuck around till the end. If you liked the video, consider liking and subscribing for more content like this.